Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. So we've been doing a kick recently on security, but we've been really looking at legacy OSs. Um, legacy OS security from a functional standpoint, are they really as bad as you know Microsoft, for instance, would say, or the people in the Linux community would say for running an outdated operating system? I figured today maybe we could look at something a little more popular. If you guys don't know already, obviously I'm talking about Ubuntu. This particular system is a long-term support Ubuntu. Uh, it is 2024 for those that are watching this in the future. Um, if we really start to dig into the operating system, some questions will come up as to why it's secure, what makes it secure, are there actual security risks that are just out of the box with Ubuntu versus Windows? Because obviously the, the average user of a Ubuntu system and the average user of a Windows system are not the same person. Generally speaking, people that use a Windows operating system can be anybody from you know any background of any kind, whereas Linux usually it's more of guys like us or women like us, right? So we're, we're people in general that are in the tech field that are IT savvy. For the most part, we're the people that use the Ubuntu or the Linux-based operating systems. Maybe not so much Ubuntu, but the Linux-based operating systems. Now, with that said, if we build out this Ubuntu system by adding, um, I don't know, LibreOffice or OpenOffice, and we add some of the Microsoft stuff, maybe like Teams and the uh, Office apps themselves onto it, and we build it out as a functional desktop, something that maybe somebody at home would use uh, that's not in the traditional Linux background. Let's get that built out first. And then once we get that built out, let's run a scan, a security scan against the Ubuntu system. Now, keep in mind, this particular version of Ubuntu, I have absolutely no plan whatsoever on making this a pro version for the sake of this video. We could scan a pro version afterwards to see if that increases the security on a Ubuntu system. But for the sake of this video, I figure what we'll do is we'll just scan a basically out of the box Ubuntu configuration with some applications installed on it, all the updates installed on it. And then we'll do a comparison to Windows 11 with comparable applications installed on it out of the box. So let's take a look at these two operating systems and see which one is actually more secure. Okay guys, welcome back. So at this point we have installed a variety of applications on the system and ran all the updates. And what we have on here now is we have Excel and OneNote and PowerPoint and Outlook and Word and Microsoft Teams, Google Chrome. We have a, a version of like FreeOffice, which if you haven't used FreeOffice, check it out. It's a lot like OpenOffice and um, LibreOffice, but it looks a lot more like the Microsoft application. Uh, and then obviously the VLC player. So we have basically what I would call a generic desktop configuration. So this is something that I would imagine that most people from like a home user perspective on a Linux system would likely use, including Zoom and, you know, for their remote calls and whatnot, and OneDrive for file access and things like that. Again, because people that are transitioning from a Microsoft system to a Linux system likely are gonna have some Microsoft products installed. So now that we have all this stuff installed and it's updated, let's run a scan, a security scan against the system. Let's see what we get as a result. And then let's do the same thing on our Windows 11 machine. Let's take a look at it. Let's check the package. Let's see what's installed on it. We'll check it out. And at that point, we will run a scan on that system as well. And we'll get basically a baseline of the two systems out of the box, no domain involved, to see is Linux more secure than Windows or is Windows more secure than Linux, especially at this point in 2024. Okay, guys, so now we're back on our Nessus scanner and we ran the scan against the Ubuntu system. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm not surprised as to how it looks and how it turned out. So if we drill into the actual Ubuntu scan itself to see how what we got, we have seven infos. That's it. There's no criticals, there's no alerts, there's no alarms, there's no faults, there's no failures, there's nothing else in here. And the ones that are in the info, for the most part, are pretty much not a big deal. Um, for instance, we know that it's on a virtual machine. It's going to give an identifier. I'm well aware of that. Um, trace route information. Yep, it's because ICMP is turned on on the actual machine, so you can ping it. 
we could disable ICMP if we wanted to in the Ubento operating system fairly easy, but for the sake of this test, it was out of the box, no configuration outside of just basic installs. What do we get from a scan perspective? Is it secure? I would say without a shadow of a doubt, it's secure. Um, this is probably one of the best ones I've seen. Uh, I doubt that Windows 11 will even touch it, but we will run the Windows 11 scan here shortly once we get the rest of the uh, applications installed. And we'll check on that to see specifically what it is uh, that Windows 11 shows us during the same scan. Um, but so far, I would say, yeah, Ubuntu, at least in long-term support, um, is pretty darn secure. Hey, guys. Before we switch over to Windows 11, I did want to run one more scan on the system. So what I did is I went into the Ubuntu system and I disabled the firewall. And the reason why is because sometimes with the firewall configurations, the listening ports are still set to listening on the operating system, but the firewall blocks the access of those ports from the outside. That's kind of an obscure way to do security. And while it does work, if the defense of the firewall crashes, somebody gets into the system, or if there's an issue with the firewall itself, then all of those ports that would be blocked by the firewall would become listening ports. So what I did is on the Ubuntu side, I disabled the firewall and I went back into the Nessus scan and I scanned again against the actual operating system to see if there was a change in what the results were. And if we drill down and we look at the configuration, the actual vulnerabilities listed as seven infos, it's exactly the same, which tells us that the operating system, at least on the Ubuntu side, doesn't rely on that firewall to maintain security. So that's something to keep in mind as something relatively important when we review the Windows 11 side, because I have a feeling on the Windows 11 side, if it's much like any of the other Windows operating systems, it's just the firewall that's actually going to block the connection. And once we disable it, we'll probably get hundreds of vulnerabilities. But that's just what I have a feeling is going to happen. Color me surprised if it doesn't, but let's check it out. Okay guys, so we're on the Windows 11 side of the fence now, and I'm just waiting for Windows 11 to finish running its updates. But as you can see, I installed the same thing, the free office on this thing as well. And I have the VLC player installed on this. I have Google Chrome installed on this. I didn't install Firefox because I figured I would keep it to the two browser configuration, where in this case we have Edge and Chrome. And I understand we could argue it's the same thing. They're both based off of Chromium. I get that. Um, other things that are installed is obviously the out-of-the-box configuration for Microsoft Office uh, 365 apps, as well as the Zoom configuration, which I had on the other machine as well. So I tried to make them uh, as close as possible to one another as far as the um, configuration is uh, set up. Um, I don't have any additional uh, configuration on the Ubuntu box. I'm not going to put anything additional on this. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm going to run this as if it was somebody that just was out there, that purchased a new computer, that installed the applications they use, and then <clears throat> installed the Windows updates on their system. And once the system's done with the updates, I'll reboot the system, and I will get the uh, Nessus scanner going so we could do a comparison between the Ubuntu box and this Windows 11 box. Now, I do want to point out one thing in the process of doing these videos is at this point, I have probably close to a hundred different operating systems installed on my system, on my host system. And my host system is no slouch by any uh, sense of the word. I mean, it is a 10th gen processor and I know the 14ths are out and they are faster. I get that. But the system, the host anyway, has 128 gigs of DDR4 on it um, with uh, two NVMe drives in a RAID 1 configuration. And then it has uh, multiple terabytes of SATA connection drives on a uh, SATA controller that's PCI Express. So this is not a slow host. And right now, currently, it's running the uh, Tamil Nessus scanner on a file server, a domain controller in the background, and this Windows 11 machine. And Windows 11, by far, is the slowest operating system I have ever used. It is a catastrophic boat anchor in comparison to everything else that's installed on this system. I actually can't believe how slow it is, and I'm amazed that people are still adopting it as their primary operating system. Now, with that said, uh, let's get over to the Nessus side and take a look at the scan results for a Windows 11 machine versus Ubuntu. Okay, guys, welcome back. So, we are now on the Nessus system. 
We finished running the scans on Windows 11 for both the no firewall scan and the firewall scan. In the scan, what we found is that Windows 11, while it's probably more secure than most operating systems Microsoft makes at this point from a desktop client's configuration standpoint, it's not as secure as Ubuntu, and probably not surprisingly. So in our scan of Ubuntu, we found that the firewall really doesn't do much. The firewall blocks the ability for the connection, but there's no listening ports for applications that are enabled by default on the Ubuntu box until you install the actual uh, corresponding application or process. Whereas with Windows, that's not the case. Windows out of the box has a bunch of stuff listening, but they use the Windows firewall to configure your security which again is not a big deal. I mean, generally speaking, if the Windows firewall is running and there's no issues with the Windows firewall, then realistically, it's plenty secure for Windows. Now, with that said, if the Windows firewall is not running, then the Windows 11 operating system is nowhere near as secure as the Ubuntu system is. Also, again, probably not surprising. So let's drill into these and take a look. So we're going to go into the Windows out of the box configuration first. And we're going to see that we have three infos for this, which again, not a big deal. This is actually pretty good. We don't really see too much as far as a uh, configuration standpoint, as far as uh, anything that we would call a threat or the ability to access the system with just these info configurations. However, this changes slightly if we go into the no firewall configuration. In here, we have 40 infos and one medium vulnerability. Now, this is, again, right out of the box. This is a brand new system, couple things installed, updated today, scanned today. It's got the latest patches on it, and I still have a medium vulnerability out of the box, which makes me concerned because in a Windows environment, I, they can't possibly not know that this exists. And if we drill into this, we could see that there's signing, no signing required for the SMB. So that's considered a, uh, a flaw. And if we go down here, we can actually see exploit available, true. And the exploits are available. And then we see the publish date for vulnerability is January 17, 2012. So this issue has existed in the Windows Vista platform. You know, that's Vista 8, you know, Vista 7, 8, 8, 1, 10, and 11 since January 17, 2012, and Microsoft still hasn't fixed it. So let's go back to the vulnerabilities here, and we're gonna see that there's a variety of info or multiple issues that are in here. And the, the when you, now keep in mind, when you see infos, this is, can this be a flaw? Yes. Is it a flaw? Yes. Is it likely that something's gonna happen on this? No. It's usually a configuration change that needs to take place versus a security like out of the, you know, like a Windows update or an antivirus uh, fix. So when we're looking at this configuration here, when we see all of these things in here, realistically, this one, this medium here with this 5.3 uh, level of CSV, uh, CVSS is the concern. Why does the operating system still have this SMB signature issue installed on Windows 11 from a notification, an actual CVE event that took place in January of 2012. So they've had over 12 years to fix this and still haven't. So going back to the question, is Windows 11 as secure as Ubuntu? I would say a hard no. Is Windows 11 more secure than the other Windows operating systems from a client perspective currently? I would say, yeah, it's probably one of the most secure ones that are out there currently, all things considered. Now, if you are the type of person that wants to run a secure operating system, I would tell you to choose Ubuntu over Windows. Um, but again, I understand the ease of access and ease of use in Windows. So yes, Windows 11, out of the box, not too bad. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. All right, my tech friends, thanks for watching another video. Take it easy, guys.